Hi, this is uh, Paul Salem at the Middle East Institute's Vantage Point, and I'm uh, thrilled to have with me today uh, Ms. Yegane Rezian. Uh, uh, Yegane is a journalist uh, who covered Iranian political, social, and economic news for Bloomberg News, and then for the national newspaper, which is based in Abu Dhabi, and she was based in Tehran. Uh, and she did that until uh, July 2014, when she and uh, her husband, Washington uh, Post Tehran bureau chief Jason Razian uh, were detained uh, in Iran, as many of you know. Uh, Yegane was finally released on bail in early October, having spent a total of 72 nights in Tehran's Evin prison, 69 of them in solitary confinement, uh, while her husband uh, remained incarcerated. And he was he was released uh, a long while later, as uh, many of you know. Um, Yegane, welcome uh, to the Middle East Institute and welcome to this uh, broadcast, Vantage Point. Um, congratulations or, you know, on your safe exit uh, from Evin Prison, from Iran, and uh, you and Jason now in the United States, and we're happy uh, you're safe and sound. Um, we're not going to talk about that experience. We want to talk about uh, your insights uh, into Iran. Uh, social life, cultural life, how that relates to sort of broader trends and how we can better understand what's, uh, what's going on uh, in Iran. I do want to also mention she's been recently at Harvard's Kennedy School uh, and at George Washington University's Global Women's uh, Institute. So let me uh, start with an open question about the youth of Iran. Uh, very active in, in various rounds of elections. Back in 2009, there was quite, uh, you know, the Green Movement and, and sort of protest over, over what happened then. There's been two presidential elections since then, President Rouhani, first election and, and second election. How would you describe to an outside audience sort of the map of, of youth in Iran, how, how they see things, how they see their role in Iranian society? Paul, thank you very much for having me today. It's an honor and privilege to be here. Very, very good question to begin with. Um, as a young Iranian, as a person who was born after the revolution, I should say that, uh, first of all, Iranians are naturally very involved and engaged people mm -hmm. in any decision um, that um, usually is taken in their country, mm -hmm. whether political or social, you will never see um, the Iranian population as a passive population. Mm -hmm. They are always very involved to the extent as much as um, the situation gives them capacity. And that's very true about the younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the Iranian population these days and the younger generation are very demanding. They, like many people around the world, different nations, they want to have a good quality of life. Um, they are very serious about their educations. Mm -hmm. um, 80, 90 percent of, of the population has high um, university education mm -hmm. and of course, they want their next generation and their children have that opportunity. And um, well, let me ask a little bit: Do they? I mean, about their engagement in the political institutions. There are elections. Of course, they're very restricted among candidates selected by, uh, you know, by the government, as it were, in one sense or another. Uh, one gets a sense from the outside that there were high hopes in two thousand and nine. Then, you know, discouragement, engagement, disengagement. Would you describe sort of, I know it's great generalization of very complex matters, but is it a mood of resignation that this is life and there's not much we can do about it on the political side? Or I, is there hope, for example, in President Rouhani's second term? Did young people turn out uh, uh, for that election hoping for change that absolutely. way? Absolutely. I should say based on what we all observed in this election and the re-election of President Rouhani, it was very obvious that the younger generation believes they can um, make decisions and their high turnout and their involvement mm -hmm. won't all of a sudden change the whole system, but gradually um, they can 
create smaller changes that mm. will lead through the system. Through the were. system, what yes. What other spaces would you say, let's say young people in the cities, in Tehran, for mm -hmm. example, what, I mean, other than politics, of course, we're maybe in Washington, we always <laughs> obsess about politics. Right. But what other spaces, whether it's, you know, through the university or through private life, uh, later we, we are going to talk about the arts and so on, but uh, what other spaces do they feel are available and open to them, uh, putting mm -hmm. politics aside? Okay. Um, religion might be, you know, another absolutely. outlet. Absolutely. Um, depends on what um, faction of the society you belong mm -hmm. to, whether you are from very religious family, so you go to mosques. Mm -hmm. Basij is always there for the younger generation of boys and girls who want to be involved and be a member. There are all kinds of Quranic um, schools, schools or clubs. And, yeah. Yes. And for those who are from like a more modern, less religious part of the society, uh, mostly in up north, for example, mm -hmm. of Tehran, there are lots of these days private, semi-private um, art institute or art exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, these days, younger generation, I see that they pay lots of attention to music. Mm -hmm. um, they are really go-getter with their demands in terms of having concerts. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good experience for them because they can um, exercise freedom of expression, mm -hmm. go to uh, state-sponsored Because a while ago, I mean, concerts, I mean, um, several years ago, I, mean, right. I was uh, visited Tehran a number of times, but when I first went uh, in the 90s, uh, music was still banned, and, c and certainly cinema was banned and so on, but that's, that's changed, that, and, and, that and how has it changed, yes, would you say? Yes, that relatively changed. You mm -hmm. know, there are times, usually every time there is an election, you see a little bit of more... Um, pressure mm -hmm. to ban or cancel some of these cultural events but um, usually after that very sensitive time, time passes exactly yeah. things mm -hmm. open up more and more mm -hmm. and the younger generation um, have more, more opportunities, opportunities to express yeah. themselves to participate in more cultural event one thing that these days is really big um, is getting together in um, different um, private or semi-private art um, clubs that happen and open up. You see, you, you travel to Tehran these days and you see in the evening, um, boys and girls are everywhere, mm -hmm. coffee shops, coffee nets. Um, so social space, I social mean, just for space, people. Social yeah. space, uh, mingling, and um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they express ideas or share or create art and music. Well, let me ask about social media, I mean, sure. or the virtual space, which is <laughs> quite mm -hmm. real these days, given right. how much uh, time people spend on it. Uh, to what degree is it or is it not restricted? How much, you know, okay, whether that's it's Facebook a very or. Also good question. And what, what m social media do people As use? As you and most of our viewers probably know, uh, Facebook and Twitter have been blocked for a very long time mm. since those. Um, since 2009, yes, effectively. On, on yeah. rest of. Um, as the aftermath of that election. Uh, but these days, Iranian younger generation use um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it that's is, not blocked. It is not 100% blocked. Mm -hmm. there it's is, monitored. It is monitored. Yeah. But um, the good thing that I believe in is that um, when, when the officials receive all these requests from hardliners to block these social medias, or it's better to say social platforms, mm -hmm. for people to express themselves. And they are aware of that request, but at the same time they are also really aware of the hunger mm -hmm. that the Iranian mm -hmm. people 
have in terms of getting connected to the rest of the world or be connected to themselves from different cities domestically mm -hmm. or different neighborhoods and they quietly sit on it is actually a quiet effort in positive sort of balancing effort. Exactly. in a way yeah they know that there is a demand for it to be blocked but they are not actively closing it overnight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a good thing it gives a space and um means hmm, whoever that is... To express and let off some pressure and exactly. steam, as they say. Yeah. Yes, whoever that is in power believes in, in the role mm -hmm. that social media these days believe, and I am sure um, that's a very smart decision that mm -hmm. the Rouhani administration took in the past mm. four years, and I hope they continue mm -hmm. um, moving forward well, You've described a bit, you know, variations within even Tehran itself, the, the right. capital. Uh, Iran is a vast, vast country with an enormous, you know, obviously countryside, to put it mildly, in many cities all over the place. Uh, and we've seen in other, whether it's in the U.S. or even in Western Europe, great differences of, of lifestyle and opinion. We saw it in elections, great divisions and so on. Uh, when you go outside of Tehran, mm -hmm. uh, to the degree that you know, you, you've been around recently, I know it's a vast country, it's hard to, but uh, any comparisons or reflections you can make comparing you know, life in Tehran and attitudes in Tehran, even with its variations between right, north and right. other parts. But when you look at other parts of the country, what can you say about sort of the differences there? Um, one thing that as a new immigrant um, I can compare between my home country and the United States is that um, luckily in Iran we still have a very, very strong family support. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it's not that we don't have drug addiction or financial problems. Um, yes, we have all of those, mm -hmm. it may happen to anybody, but family support is still very strong that mm -hmm. you won't see um, lots of homelessness or if somebody is bankrupted uh, in a very severely bad situation. So I am still very proud of that and I hope people realize how valuable mm -hmm. that value is. Um, also, as you said, Iran is a very, very big country, different tribes. We have Azeris that speak, um, who speak Turkish Azeri language. We have Baluchis. We have uh, Kurdish Iranians. We have Arab Iranians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always think to myself, Iran is a very difficult country mm -hmm. to, to rule, to keep the whole thing together. Um, and obviously lifestyle is not everywhere as beautiful or glamorous mm -hmm. as it is in Tehran. Tehran is a capital, lots of funds go to it. I travel um, with President Rouhani to one of his province or provincial trips um, to Sistan and Baluchistan, which is the biggest province in mm -hmm. the country right now. They say five times bigger than France and Syria. And the population over there is dealing with lots of different problems. It's a dry province, so they used to do lots of farming now because of all the drought that is happening in the country. Farming mm -hmm. is not the main job that of the people. That maybe is a climate change exactly. impact. Exactly. Yeah. And um, some border issues with uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, some of the rivers are not running through mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Iranian parts of the Baluchi. Um, tribe, so they have different issues, but as I said, um, because family support is really strong, people still um, trust themselves and really try to first solve problems within their own tribe network, or yeah, network, yeah. and then if that doesn't work, they go to, for example, the municipality mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. different departments, Especially, I should say, for example, w one of the um, negative effect of um, modern life these days is that it distance people from each mm -hmm. other. So in Tehran, yes, the life is more glamorous. People dress nicely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
Many, urban life. Exactly. Yeah. Many people speak different languages. Everybody mm. has Wi-Fi in their home. Restaurants are so beautifully designed. Mm. It is not like that in Sistan and Balochistan, but people are still very, very together. Mm -hmm. Their neighborhood... Strong social networks, strong neighborhood social networks. Ne ne neighborhoods are still built around one mm -hmm. roundabout and they visit each other every night. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that's a source of absolutely exactly. uh, resources and solidarity. They have and one elder person in the tribe that they still go to mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. there is a problem, that they respect because of the age and mm. the religious and uh, the experiences that yeah. he or she might have and that is very special. Mm. So I that's a strength of those rural very, areas. Very good but me, I mean I was in Tehran actually last year and it was after you know, the nuclear deal and mm -hmm. whatnot and certainly there had been high expectations of economic boom and lifting right. of sanctions and uh, uh, and, you know, a lot of people I talked to there, obviously, maybe some disappointment that the great economic boom did not happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a lot of people, you know, an awareness of very high unemployment, especially among right. young people. And, right. Um, even in Tehran. I mean, That's I just right. was in Tehran. But uh, uh, that that was a very acute pressure, the Absolutely. issue of economic yes. uh, need and unemployment. And that that was a severe pressure on on the government. That's uh, right. Yes. And this was before the re-election of President Rouhani. How do and you know from your circles and so on? How do young people deal with unemployment or looking for jobs? I mean, mm -hmm. that is a key part of their life. Right. Um, as I said earlier, um, the younger generation um, is s seriously looking for having higher education mm -hmm. and when obviously you know when you have higher education then you have, you higher, have higher expectations, expectations. Yeah. you won't be happy with a small salary or a very simple job you want to have a good position and that um, is as you said a very serious issue to tackle and unfortunately um, one thing that happens more and more is the high number of as we say immigration or several years ago we used to call it brain drain Pe mm -hmm. people got their education and um, Just left, they yeah. found there are better opportunities outside the country mm -hmm. where would be like a most likely destination for uh, I would say um, English speaking countries mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Britain or Australia or Canada, even United States mm. was always uh, on the top of the list for Iranians to immigrate to. That happens quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I see among mm -hmm. the younger generations, even younger than me or some of um, people around my age that um, they don't see their expectations Much of the future. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or they know if they get some kind of job in a factory, things will stay in that same level, mm -hmm. and they don't see promotion or um, much of a bright economic exactly. future. Exactly. Yeah. Let me, with the time remaining, because time is a bit tight, uh, ask you of women. Role, well, you know, the mm -hmm. place of women. Of course, women have been a big part of from the days of the revolution and other things as well. Right. They've had major challenges. Yes. It remains a very patriarchal society, like many societies in the region, but it's a very complex picture. Yes. How yes. can you explain currently sort of the different, it's obviously, again, a wide variety of experiences and conditions, but how, how can you explain it uh, to our viewers or listeners in the best way? You could. So, as you said, it's a very complex um, subject to talk about. Um, one good thing I can say is that unlike our sisters in other uh, countries in the region, um, our situation is not as dark as their situation is. Um, so Iranian women have always been in the social life outside homes, especially this trend was initially after revolution somehow forced on our mothers because of the eight 
year imposed war, lots of men went to, to the to war. The Iran Iraq exactly. War. Yeah. So women had to step mm. outside their comfort zone and um, one good thing to give credit to the um, Islamic Republic is providing the opportunity for Iranian women to go and get educated mm -hmm. so they can have a better life and provide a better life for themselves and their children. And um, so that trend is being continued with mm -hmm. us who are the next generation born after the revolution. And as it is everywhere in the news, up to 70, sometimes 75 of the Iranian girls are um, the university goers. Mm -hmm. the very high levels of very education. Very high, high yeah. level. They, um, they basically pass their fellow male um, um, and um, competitors and um, they are everywhere. And what's their presence in the workforce? Any office that you go yeah. to, you see 70, 80 percent of that office is being basically run mm -hmm. by women. But unfortunately, we still have, like most of the countries, even here, we have major issues. For example, yes, 70 percent of the workforce in a bank is women. But, but the, boss. the, the bosses are all men, mm -hmm. or we are. We still have to fight for equal rights in terms of equal pay or mm -hmm. um, any kind of gender equality, equity that women all around the world are fighting with. We have to fight for mm -hmm. our rights mm -hmm. in those issues still. One of the major uh, promises of President Rouhani when he was running his campaign was to um, elect a female member for his, for cabinet. his cabinet. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Why did that not happen? Nobody gave any mm -hmm. uh, explanation. He went to the parliament and said he even picked three women and their positions, but that didn't happen. It just abruptly shattered the mm. hopes and dreams of a very, very vast number of mm -hmm. his supporters. Again, unfortunately, and I, I was following the whole news on social media, especially Twitter, women did not wait for seconds. They were all over social media mm -hmm. demanding transparency from normal women to more activist or actors, mm, female mm. actors that are more publicly mm -hmm. known. That unfortunately didn't happen, but I should say the reason women, Iranian women were demanding to have a voice in a cabinet wasn't just to have like a women as a puppet, as a representative. Mm -hmm. It would give them character. It would show that all these years, all these hard work, all these efforts, all these educations pays off. Pays off. Yeah, yeah. That would be a tribute to very, very hard working mm -hmm. Iranian women who are mothers and wives and daughters and they still work really hard outside. And I think that would give a very, very good credit even to the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because imagine um, later in September, President Rouhani and his entourage will travel to New York and there's just one or two women traveling with them as lower level vice president, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And basically That also gives a very bad image if exactly, you're thinking of it in that way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunate things, yeah, Yes, yeah. that didn't happen. I hope um, somehow he retreats his decision if that's possible. Mm -hmm. And um, there's at least one position to be filled. Maybe that goes to a... That would be one step. Yes, yeah, yeah. one woman. Well, Yagani, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing some of your experiences and insights. Uh, we definitely wish, wish you and wish Jason a lot of luck in your new adjustment coming back to the U.S. Uh, thanks again for being with us. Uh, thank you for following along, and uh, we'll see you next time at MEI's Vantage Point. Thank you for having me, Thank you, Yagani.